Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Delicious Cooking Series. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make something very interesting. <laughs> I'm going to be showing you two ways to make pizza using the stove method and the oven method. Are you interested in learning how this is made? All right, let's go right into the cooking action. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button and the bell just right beside me so you can get instantly notified whenever I upload a new video. And of course, please like this video if you like what you see after watching it because I always love to see your likes. All right, now we can go into the cooking action. <laughs> To make the pizza dough, add the all-purpose flour into a mixing bowl, followed by the instant yeast, some granulated white sugar and some salt. Give it a good stir to combine. Make a hole in the center and add the egg, then mix again to combine. Next up, add the warm milk and mix again. The full recipe details will be in the description box down below, so be sure to check it out, okay? The soft butter goes in next. This time, we have to get the hands to do the job. So go in with your hands and mix all the ingredients together till a dough is formed. When a dough is formed, transfer to a flat surface and begin kneading for at least 10 to 12 minutes. Kneading the dough will help activate the gluten and give you a very soft and stretchy consistency, which is exactly what you want. Cannot overemphasize the importance of this part, guys. It has to be done right. It will require some muscle power, but it will be worth it in the end. Alternatively, you can use a stand mixer with the kneading iron if you have one at home, but ensure you knead for at least 10 to 12 minutes to achieve the right consistency for the dough. should be very soft and should bounce right back up when poked with a finger. To activate the yeast, place the dough back in the mixing bowl, cover with a kitchen napkin and place in a warm place. The dough will double in size and become lighter in weight afterwards. While it is rising, Go ahead and prep the pizza toppings. A typical pizza topping is made up of the sauce, the vegetables, proteins, and lots of cheese. You can use a store-bought pizza sauce or any tomato-based sauce, or you can just make your own pizza sauce at home. My homemade pizza sauce is very easy to make and is one sure way to pack lots of vegetables into your meal. I use a bunch of veggies to create it. For this, I'm using onions, green and red bell peppers, some carrots, celery, tomatoes, and scotch bonnet peppers. Cut all the vegetables in tiny chunks, then add some oil to a pan and heat up on medium heat. Next, add the onions and saute for a few seconds, then add the carrots and celery. Saute for another minute before adding the green and red bell peppers and the tomatoes. Season with some thyme, some curry powder, seasoning cubes, and salt. Stir to combine. Then add one cup of water, cover the pot and leave to simmer for five minutes. After about five minutes, the vegetables should have softened up, transfer to a blender and blend till completely pureed. You should have a creamy consistency afterwards. If you want a red sauce, avoid adding a lot of carrots to the mix. Place the sauce in a bowl and set aside 
or you can store it in the freezer for up to two months till you're ready to use it. I always like to make this in a large batch so that I don't have to keep remaking each time I want to make a pizza. For the proteins, I'm using chicken breast, some sausage and bacon pieces. You can use whatever proteins you have available. Season the chicken with some salt and pepper and transfer to an oiled pan on high heat. Pan sear on one side for 3 to 4 minutes or until brown and then flip to the other side to pan sear for another 3 minutes. Pan sear all sides of the bacon and sausage pieces as well. Take off the heat, cut in bite-sized pieces, place on a plate and set aside. Proceed to grate the cheese with a box grater. Mozzarella cheese is usually the cheese option for making a pizza because of its very stretchy consistency. After grating, set on a plate and set aside. I'm also using some vegetables for my toppings. Cut the vegetables into strips and set aside. As I said earlier, you can either make your pizza sauce at home or use a store-bought pizza sauce or any tomato-based sauce of your choice. I'm going to use the both of them. All my toppings are prepped and ready to go. It's time to assemble the pizza. At this time, the dough should have doubled in size. Remove it from the mixing bowl and place on a flat surface. You can see how soft it is, guys. Cut in four equal halves and work with one at a time. You can save this dough in the freezer for up to two months and use it whenever you feel like making a pizza. When you want to use it, just take it out of, of the freezer, place it on the countertop and allow it to thaw and then you can proceed to using it. For the stove method, take one of the cut doughs and roll out with a rolling pin. Ensure you trim the edges to make it look pretty, okay? <laughs> then place a pan on low heat and generously coat it with some vegetable oil. Allow the pan to heat up, then lift the dough and transfer to the pan. Allow to cook on one side for about 3 to 4 minutes or until lightly browned, then flip to the other side and immediately start placing the toppings. Start by spreading the sauce on the surface. followed by the cheese, the chopped chicken, sausage and bacon pieces, the bell peppers, and finally, more cheese. Cover the pan immediately and leave to cook for another three to five minutes on very low heat. The heat has to be set to the lowest, guys. This is very important so that your dough doesn't burn. The steam released will help melt the cheese and cook the toppings slightly. Afterwards, open up the pan, take off the heat and place the pizza on a plate. I promise you guys, it tastes so good just as it is. Cut in slices and enjoy. <laughs> If you prefer to go with the oven method, all you have to do is roll out another dough, grease a pizza tray with oil or cooking spray. If you don't have a pizza tray, you can use any oven safe tray. Lay the dough on the tray and ensure it is perfectly aligned. 
Then coat the top with some pizza sauce, followed by the shredded cheese, chicken sausage and bacon pieces, some more pizza sauce, the bell pepper strips, and finally loads and loads and loads of cheese. Be very generous with the cheese, guys. <laughs> Place in a 350 degrees preheated oven and bake for 15 to 20 minutes or until the cheese is melted and the dough is slightly browned. Take the pizza out of the oven and cut in slices. At this point, you will feel so good after a job well done. <laughs> Let me know which of the methods you will be trying out. I use both methods interchangeably depending on my mood and the amount of time I have to prepare my pizza. But both methods always come out perfect every time. So you guys, I know that the procedure or the process in making this pizza is a lot, but I tell you it's very worth it. I think the only thing that's so tedious about it is the waiting time for when you have to wait for the yeast to prove, to rise. And in that time, you can go ahead of course and be making the pizza sauce or, or the proteins that, and then cutting the, um, the toppings that you'll be needing for the, uh, for the pizza. Or you can just do the shorthand method. You can buy the pizza dough from the store, you can buy the pizza sauce from the store, and then you can just buy your um, the, the smoked chicken from the store as well and use it as your topping. Just do the shortcuts if you don't want to go through this process. But I tell you, if you go through this process, it's actually really worth it because when you're done, you literally pat yourself at the back and say, well done, I did a good job. And it'll taste really amazing and everyone's gonna love it. If you'll be requesting this recipe, please kindly stick pictures and upload to your Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter stories and tag me at Delicious Foods so that I can repost on my stories as well for everyone else to see it. All right, guys, I'll see you next time with another mouth-watching and delicious recipe. Until then, let's break kind to one another. Love yourselves generously and take care. I can't wait to go and devour my 